Chief Investment Officer at uh, Standard Chartered. He's joining us right now to uh, take some uh, questions. Chief, great to have you back on the program. Thanks very much. Uh, how important is the CPI number later today and will that uh, spark a, a big move across assets, in your opinion? Well, actually, I agree with your comments earlier, right? I think markets are pretty um, set up for a, for a poor outcome here. Obviously, we've had the FOMC minutes uh, and some speaker comments as well, sort of alluding to the hawkish stance that we have there. There was a little bit of a hint of maybe calibrating uh, the pace of rate hikes at some uh, indefinite point in the future. But uh, for now, the, the, the very focus is definitely on a 75 basis point rise. But if you look at the VIX index, you know, we're at the, the highs for the, uh, for the year. Um, and, and from that perspective, you know, this is an important number to see if it, it, even if it doesn't, you know, surprise on the positive side, i.e. fall down, fall significantly, um, then I think, you know, markets might take temporary relief uh, from, from, the, from the numbers. Hi, Steve. Uh, morning. Uh, you know, the Fed minutes we got yesterday, and as you said, they sounded more hawkish than dovish, but that one point gave, uh, you know, the market participants some hope that maybe we could see some bit of easing on the interest rate or maybe a bit of a pause. How many rate hikes are you factoring in before, you know, the Fed takes its uh, foot off the pedal uh, from year on? Is it, uh, you know, maybe for this year or the next six months or so? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been really difficult all year, right, to try and predict where the Fed's going to be. I mean, we were talking at the end of last year, the Fed was talking about 75 basis points for the full year, and it's done three of those in consecutive mm. meetings and likely to do the fourth, right? So I think that's, uh, that, that's the, the most likely outcome is that we see another 75 basis points in the early November meeting. We may then start seeing them ratchet down the pace of tightening, but still tightening. Inflation is going to remain elevated for, for quite some time. And absent a financial shock, and we've seen a couple, obviously, in, in recent times, obviously the UK in particular, um, but uh, you know, we, we seem, seem to think they're going to still continue to hike rates despite slowing growth expectations. So from an equity market perspective, I guess you know, we, we sort of talked about the very short term, but we are we're looking at one to three months, despite pretty bearish sentiment out there uh, and people being underweight equities, uh, we still think there's, there's risk of continued volatility into the year end before we form a base, potentially in 2023. Uh, Steve, morning. We've seen some extraordinary drama uh, as well as commentary and moves coming out of Bank of England over the last couple of days. Uh, and markets are clearly very jittery about the developments, the flip-flop, uh, the different uh, noises and sound bites that we're getting in from Bank of England. What are the implications for the global economy? Can it uh, trigger a big round of volatility? Can it force the hand of other central bankers? Uh, how should investors in India watch the developments unfolding there? Uh, to be honest, I think the knock-on implications for the global economy are going to be pretty limited. Obviously, the UK is, is still a relatively small economy from a, from a global perspective. Not insignificant, of course, but it's not, uh, it's not a US or a China or a Euro area. So from that perspective, it, it, it's, it's probably uh, entertaining to watch to see what's, what's going on. I think the good thing, of course, is you know, obviously the Bank of England wants, wants to um, stop the emergency measures um, um, by tomorrow. But it's obviously watching things very closely. So should it need to reverse course? I don't think they have a major issue of doing so. But I think they're just trying to put a lot of pressure on the on the, the pension funds, etc., to 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 clean up uh, what they need to clean up as quickly as possible. So then they can move back to what they really want to focus on, which is managing inflation. So um, from that perspective, obviously, yeah, you're right. We're seeing very very high rates volatility in the, in the UK. We probably at or, 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 or you know, past peak rate volatility now, but that doesn't mean interest rates are coming down. Um, you know, we still see uh, bond yields remaining elevated and obviously the, the, the Bank of England returning to tighten policy. So um, sterling could still test parity. Um, you know, we, we've seen the obviously sterling bounce significantly from uh, from, from the lows post the, uh, the, post the mini budget. Every use uh, quotation marks around mini, of course. Um, um, and so, so, but we could see a further weakness in sterling in the short term testing parity before again that that probably bottoms out and goes higher in, in 2023. Steve, some have pointed out the risk of a financial accident uh, into the end of the year of some sort. What shape, form? No one knows, right? Mm. Uh, so, I mean, is that is that uh, on your radar? Uh, you know, uh, most uh, analysts put that as a footnote. Well, you know, all our uh, uh, forecasts don't work if there is a financial accident of some sort. I just leave it there, just in case. What's what's your sense? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm an economist by training. Obviously, I've moved on from that from a professional perspective, <laughs> but we, we always make assumptions, right? So, look, I think 
the, 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 I mean, it has to be on everybody's radar, right? I, I think the, pro the first thing I'd say is that we are most likely to see a policy mistake here, right? So we have a 75% probability of a recession in the US over the coming 12 months. So that is, that, that's our, our, our view in the CIA office. Um, so even absent a financial shock, that's obviously not a great, a, a great outcome or a great environment. Mm. The thing that you know makes us probably a little bit more concerned about whether that will be deep or maybe more uh, you know, lead to financial fragilities is just the pace of tightening. We've never seen anything, certainly not in my lifetime, something like this before. Uh, and it does risk uncovering things that we're not aware of, right? And, and we've seen that in the UK. Uh, we've seen that in the European financial sectors to some extent, although fairly uh, you know, idiosyncratic at this stage. But it obviously is something that you have to be uh, keeping an eye on. The reality is, we, you know, it, it's a, it's an unknown unknown exactly what it will, what it, what it could mm. be. Um, so we're just keeping an eye on it. But yes, when it's an unknown unknown, it's difficult to quantify, uh, and therefore it becomes that asterisk footnote uh, that you're talking about. Steve, very quickly, you were bullish on India, though equity is uh, globally will remain volatile. Uh, you continue to hold that stance. Yeah, so so we're overweight yeah. India within Asia X Japan. Okay. Um, so you know that that's still our stance. Obviously, we, we uh, we're not hugely bullish on oil prices from here, so that's a positive uh, factor. Okay. I know we had the inflation print today, but we do think inflation is going to come down, so that wow. should lead uh, India to outperform. Okay, all right, Steve. Thanks so much for stopping by and filling us in with your quick take. And good to hear that uh, you know you believe crude oil so prices much. have peaked up and in fact continue to remain bullish on India. For the time being, we'll slip into a short break. You come back, we'll get stock specific. We'll focus on the top stocks for the day.